Hello, good morning, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Patagonia, this is Jay. Today we're gonna to talk about fiber epithelial lesions of the breast using Kurtz Notes. If you already haven't, check out Kurtz Notes. It's a great, great resource for pathology residents. Let's get to it. Fibroadenomas are biphasic proliferations. They're benign neoplasms of the terminal duct lobular units, TDLUs, which are the basic, the elemental unit of breast histology. Um, again, it's a biphasic proliferation of the epithelial cells and the stromal cells. It's clinically painless, slowly growing, solitary. Um, it's more common in younger women. Uh, it can enlarge because during pregnancy because it is hormone sensitive. Not usually monoclonal, but the stromal cells have frequent MED12 mutations. Uh, you can have two, broadly speaking, two types of um, fibroadenomas. You can have intracannulicular, where the ducts are slit-like spaces, and pericannulicular, where the duct spaces are open. And I'm exaggerating the pronunciation, just it helps me remember. So intra is slit like peri is open. Um, when you get a fibroadenoma on a biopsy or resection, you also want to look for the presence of stromal overgrowth, the cytologic atypia, uh, any mitotic activity, whether there are fronds or whether there is leaf-like architecture, because in that case, you want to have phylloides tumor higher in your differential. And we'll talk about this uh, in the coming slides. Um, it's important to know that you can have lipomatous or smooth muscle metaplasia, and as well as DCIS in the epithelium. So when you look at a, a fibroadenoma from low power, uh, if you do see some cookie cutter spaces, a section that looks monoclonal, do look closer um, and zoom in. Uh, you can have juvenile fibroadenoma. These are more common in adolescents. Uh, they're large, and unlike your typical fibroadenoma, they're rapidly growing. It uh, has pericannulicular growth with increased stromal cellularity and introductal gynecomastoid UDH. Uh, most fibroadenomas don't uh, reoccur after complete surgical excision. So hamartomas, these aren't biphasic uh, proliferations, but um, they're a kind of, the way I like to think of hamartomas are they're composed of benign normal tissue elements. So in the breast, you'll have adipose tissue, um, smooth muscle and stromal cells and epithelium. They're just disorganized and they grow in varying proportions. And this is a case more than other cases like your fibroadenoma where clinical and radiologic correlation is important um, because otherwise you might just consider it normal breast. Uh, radiologically, it'll be a round and well-circumscribed lesion, and it's generally encapsulated mass composed of normal breast tissue components, ducts, lobules, fibrous tissue, adipose tissue, in varying proportions, uh, sometimes called an adenal lipoma. Okay, so uh, phylloides tumor is more worrisome than a fibroadenoma. Phylloides tumors can be broken down into three uh, great. So there's benign, there's borderline, and there's malignant. So generally speaking, Floyd's tumor is a fibroepithelial biphasic neoplasm with prominent intracannulicular growth and stromal hypercellularity. <clears throat> because of the exaggerated intracannulicular growth, it looks leaf-like. And you can, you can imagine like these kind of veins are the exaggerated intracannulicular growth. They'll, they'll, they will have increased stromal cellularity, particularly around the epithelium. And features of malignant phylloides include stromal overgrowth, and that's defined as when you're on a 4X field, you only see stroma. Uh, increased mites, greater than or equal to 10, per 10 high power fields, uh, diffuse stromal cellularity, infiltrated borders, and even if you don't have all four of those uh, criteria, 
Beaches have malignant heterologous elements like chondrosarcoma, osteosarcoma, uh, not well differentiated liposarcoma, then it's automatically malignant phylloides tumor. And when a tumor has some, but not all the features of malignancy, apart from this malignant heterologous elements, then consider borderline. So molecularly, uh, there's recurrent MED12 mutations, which support a shared pathogenesis with fibroadenomas. Um, additional mutations include TERT, TP53, P10, retinoblastoma 1, and EGFR. And thank you to PATH presenter for, uh, this is another case of phylloides tumor. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have a great leaf-like architecture, but you can appreciate the the stromal cellularity. I, on my brief overview of this, I couldn't find 10, let alone five mites per high power field. So um, they didn't classify it whether this is benign or borderline, but I suspect either benign or borderline. Your risk of recurrence can be calculated using the Singapore General Hospital nomogram. Um, Kurt's notes has a, a link to it. And it just asks for stromal cytologic atypia, how many mites are visible per 10 high power fields? Is there stromal overgrowth seen? Are the margins histologically involved? And if you're unsure um, if it's fibroadenoma versus phylloides on core biopsy, uh, consider a fibroepithelial tumor with a differential. 